Failure Management As mentioned in the previous chapter, a clear-cut method of handling failures cannot be given in a single manual. Every failure is different and subsequently asks for a different approach. On the other hand, you as a captain are required to develop your own methodology for approaching failures. It has been proven that in case you, as a human being, approach every situation with a certain working method which is always the same for your case, you are much less prone to making a mistake or to forget something. In the following paragraph, we will look at some basic principles your working method should incorporate. Managing Failures 1. Control Aircraft Engage automatics, trim properly and engage an autopilot in case of complicated failures, it might be a good idea to delegate the controls of your aircraft to the first officer so you can focus on failure management. Complete any ECAM or QRH items, confirm and cross-check, and make sure all normal checklists are completed as well. Remember, once the status page is in view the aircraft is in a safe state to fly, except in case of inextinguishable fire, and you basically have all the time to do your decision making. 2. Get safe. Advise ATC, Mayday or PAN if necessary request radar vectors, heading and altitude, request to pick up a holding somewhere safe, hold it PUS can be a good solution, in case you are on the approach when the failure happens it might be safer to request a missed approach. Once requested there is no way back, do not change your mind halfway and go around. 3. Tidy up. Complete any outstanding normal checks think about immediate cabin safety. 4. Analysis. Use all available brains to identify failure obvious corrective actions are complete. Find non-normal to fit failure, do not make failure fit the drill, exceptions. Plan. Hold, how long? Fuel available versus fuel required to complete all tasks. Continue flight if possible, provided safety is assured. Use commercial alternate unless failure dictates otherwise. Involve the first officer in the decision. Briefing should be done before informing the packs. Time permitting inform the passengers in an appropriate way. 6. Evacuation Guidelines The decision to evacuate the passengers and crew from the aircraft is one not to be taken lightly. The decision either way could have enormous implications. It must be based on the overall situation of the aircraft, influenced by both internal and external factors. It is probable that the full picture will evolve as you gather information. Remember, use all sources of information. Use all available brains. Each piece of information needs to be analyzed and added to the whole in order to see how it affects the overall picture. Flight crews should address two questions when deciding on the appropriate course of action in a given scenario, utilizing the most reliable information available at the time. 1. Are the passengers safe inside the aircraft? 2. Is the situation stable and likely to remain so? If, within the best information available, the above answers are yes, do not initiate an evacuation unless circumstances change for the worse. If a reasonable element of doubt exists as to whether the present situation provides an adequate level of passenger safety, or the situation is deteriorating towards an unacceptable safety level, an evacuation will most probably be the best option available to the aircraft commander. Remember that evacuation can be unplanned or planned. In the case of planned evacuation make sure your correct orders are briefed and understood. An unplanned evacuation could happen during landing or rejected takeoff. The crew must endeavor to obtain accurate information on exterior events from any reputable source. Whenever time permits, stress to the external observer, mostly cabin crew, the need to describe to you exactly what he or she can see, not what he or she thinks or supposes is happening. Remember that at the height of an aircraft incident observers may be excited or under some degree of stress. A puff of smoke from a wet start, APU exhaust, or generator cooling vent can all too easily be portrayed by the message you're on fire. Ask what color the smoke is, and the answer gives a clue as to its origin. You can even ask the cabin crew to take a picture of what you want using a digital camera or mobile phone.